put in a curb, we're gonna put in the drain, and then we're gonna solder in the valve. Hey guys, it's Vladi with ACB Build, and today I wanna take you along. We're gonna be setting up the shower to get prep for tile, okay? So what we're gonna to do today is we're basically gonna put in a curb, we're gonna put in the drain, and then we're gonna solder in the valve. And I just wanna show you how we get this done. Let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is get the curb cut, all right? So, because that's gonna basically get us the measurements we're gonna need that we can push off of to dictate where the valve sits and where the drain sits. So, let's get the curb cut. That's 60 inches. Okay, now we're gonna sit our curb down and what we wanna do is we wanna be at least uh, 13 inches uh, or about 12 inches from the toilet. We don't want it too close because obviously the toilet needs some room. So let's get that stuff put in. All right, and usually I just go two two by fours tall. I don't wanna put a ton of two by fours on top. We want the curb as low as possible, okay? We don't need this, you know, one foot high curb. We want that thing low profile, people like that. You don't wanna step over a lot of stuff when you get in the shower. So that's what we do. I'm gonna screw the two by fours together first, and then I'm gonna find out where they sit, measure it, and screw them to the studs on the side. Get some hearing protection. All right, this is 12 inches. Let's go back 13. And then back wall. Gonna be about 32. Okay, so we got got it measured up. Let's secure it. Here. All right, now we're gonna be working on the drain. This is our drain. We gotta cut this pipe, glue this bottom piece on, and then uh, get the concrete poured in here. Bottom set the piece of the drain, we want this to be as flush with the concrete. Even better if it's about quarter inch lower, because then it, you give it a little bit of slope already. So we need to cut up a good amount. So let's first cut off this top piece so we can see where we're at with the Dremel. All right. So we're almost there. We just gotta trim it up a little bit, maybe another quarter inch. So for that, I use a blade like this. It just fits on your drill and it goes right into the drain. Okay, so that way it's a lot easier to cut it off. Give me a piece of rag. 
Got it. All right, next step, we glue this thing in. And you can see that this bottom P-trap is not absolutely straight, and that's just so sometimes that we just have to flow with it. You're not gonna be able to tell that difference after we're done. Try to straighten it out as much as possible. Just hold it with this thing bond really good. All right, now make sure before you pour the concrete, you do use some of this foam. Now this will help uh, the concrete not to crush the pipe, you know, when it gets wet or whatever, it's gonna expand or contract, any of that kind of stuff. It gives, it gives some room for the ABS pipe to move so it doesn't crack in the future. Because if it does crack, it's gonna make a smelly mess. Wrap it up really nice. Put a piece of tape on it. All right, and you see we got this thing pretty much level. You know, we just kind of glued it in place. Even though the pipe leans a little bit, we still got this thing pretty much flush, and that's exactly what we want. Put some tape on it so when we're pouring our uh, concrete, we don't get this thing all dirty and just nasty, and make it hard to work with. All right, concrete. Now guys, this is just a regular mix, concrete mix. It's nothing special, not extra strength or anything like that because obviously in the future, this might need to move. So around any kind of a drain pipe, usually you wanna just put some kind of a filler that doesn't get super strong. All right guys, now step one is done. We got the drain in, uh, at least the bottom piece. The top piece goes on after you got the pen liner in. We got the curb. Now another thing we gotta do is put blocking in the wall. We want them about eight inches high. Uh, you can e you either use plywood or use like a two by six or a two by eight to get that uh, full height. And that's about it. Now we're just gonna be working on the valve. All right guys. Now we're gonna be putting in the, the uh, shower valve, and this is a really special one. Let me show you a picture of it. All right, now we gotta figure out how this valve is gonna go. Like I showed you, this is a little bit of a special one, and the way it's gonna run, it's gonna run like this. So these are the water supply, this is the shower head, and this bottom one is gonna be for the shower wand. 
Now this is the pipe at the, at the top, so we gotta make sure that we got enough clearance, okay? We wanna, because every, all of this stuff, there's no like actual size that they want you to do or something like that. Basically, you just gotta see what looks the best, all right? So this will be absolutely the best because we're not touching the ceiling, so it's not gonna look weird. So we're about three inches from the ceiling, all right? So then, just gonna mark my line. This is where I want it. And then, we're gonna see where the center is. So from here to here, it's gonna be 31 and a half inches. So that's gonna be like what, 15, 15 three quarters, All right? 15 three quarters. And this one is 15 three quarters. Okay, 16 and a quarter. Now remember, when you try to measure where your shower valve is, you gotta take in consideration how much mud you're gonna have, how much sheetrock, and how much tile, okay? And then on the curb, obviously, you're gonna have mud and tile. So on the curb, I'm gonna put about five eighths. That's gonna be probably five eighths to an inch. And on the back wall, about inch and a half. Because with all the mud, I mean, first it's the sheetrock, then it's gonna be the mud, and then the tile. So that's gonna be the thickness of it. So let's cut this thing off. Hope there's not too much water in here. All right, make sure you have all the water supply off, including the water here, so there's no hot water coming out or anything like that. You don't wanna get this area all wet, then have to wait for it to dry before you close up the wall. Okay, obviously there's still gonna be some water pouring out, even though you drain the water from the whole house because these pipes, they come from the ceiling, okay? So there, there's no, uh, you know, they don't try to level all this stuff out, so it, it drains back or anything like that. All right, now let's take this old thing off. Now that we got the other pieces, we're gonna put a block in here and we're gonna tap these uh, pieces in here and that's what the new drain is gonna screw into. Uh, basically, it's gonna go like this after the tile is done. So we need really great support because it's gonna hold up this whole thing with these pieces, okay? So these are brass 90s it's a half inch screw in and then a half inch sweat. So that's where you sweat the copper in. So let's get started. Let's sweat these things on, screw this board on, get the measurements exact, make sure everything is 1000% level and it's gonna be beautiful. Let's get started. All right, before we sweat any pipes on, make sure you get this area really cleaned up. You want it to have a great bond. And one of the determination factors of that is, you know, how clean this pipe is. All right, see, nice and shiny, nice and clean. Get this piece. All right, make sure we got these couplers, make sure you get them cleaned out inside as well. Okay, these are uh, the half inch couplers. Like I said, make sure all these joints are nicely cleaned up. All right, this coupler goes on here. This pipe goes on here. And we, we gotta put 
flex in there before we try to solder that because if we don't put flex, it's not gonna draw in the solder. This is called flex. All right, and basically, now make sure there's no water in here because it will not solder on, okay? This thing seems pretty dry. Let's uh, dry it out a little bit more. Just give it a little heat right here. All right, nice and dry. Now let's apply the flex. Now there's some water-based uh, flex out there and it just is horrible. It's really hard to use. So, I encourage you not to get those. If you want a good bond. You put it on there really good. Put it on in your coupler. And you know, when you send the pipe, the flex sticks better to it as well when you clean it with the brush. Otherwise, it tends to just slide right off. All right, put this thing on. Let's solder this thing. This is our solder. All right, make sure you have enough of this have a good length and I like to just cur curl it like that so that way when I'm soldering I can get the back end of it you know and I like to work from bottom to top good and I try not to really take a wet rag and get it cold right away because that's gonna give it a stress all right everything that's hot is expanded when it gets cold it contracts so sometimes in like some obscure you know or just like really off the wall it can crack the solder so don't do that now let's get this pipe ready get it dried out All right, now let's get this pipe clean. All right. Make sure you clean it really good. Get this pipe clean, ready to go. Nice. Get another one of these couplers. All right. Apply some flux. Some on the coupler. Put some on the pipe. Now we're gonna apply one of these 90s. Make sure this thing is clean. Mm 
apply the flux. Make sure this thing is straight. And you don't want this thing to be turned to any side. If you're not 100% sure, use a square. We gotta match up the height on this one. Now, this pipe moves a little, so don't worry about it being 1000% because we can move it up and down. But we gotta get it close, somewhat close. So, this one, is at 53 and a half. Fifty-three and a half. Let's cut it. Let's get some flex on there. See, that's not good, the water. If the water's gonna drip, this will not solder. All right, so make sure we heat this thing up, get that water out of there. All right, I think that should be good. Now that we got these two pieces in, let's mock this up. All right, measurements are great. It's great to measure everything, but this will beat any measurement because you know this is a thousand percent. Because once you get it, once you get this thing done, you cannot go back. All right, now what we gotta do is attach this block to the back. All right. All right, now let's put this thing on. You get this thing screwed on really good. You don't want this thing to be going anywhere. Now we gotta figure out how far we wanna be out and to make sure this thing is level. I'm gonna have sheetrock, that's half inch. Then I'm gonna have mud and that's, gonna, that's what the tile is gonna go on to, okay, in this project. That's another half inch, and then the tile, which is gonna be the D100 three by six, which is gonna be another, uh, you know, three eighths of an inch. So we're talking about an inch and a half, okay, to be safe. And this is gonna have a little bit of leeway. You know, it doesn't have too much, so you gotta be pretty spot on. So let's see where I'm at right now. Inch and a half, inch and a half. This is like perfection. This is exactly what I want, okay? So I'm gonna screw this side on and then I can adjust this side for a level. I 
guys. Now this is one of the most complicated valve bodies, but obviously if you got a great plan of execution, it comes out great, all right? We're right on the money. I mean, we're as good as we can ever get when it comes to perfect level. I'm gonna double check. All righty. All right guys, we got this thing absolutely dialed in. If you look at it, it's level as it can be. And it's beautiful, nice and straight. All right guys, so now that we're satisfied with this, what we need to do is take this thing off, all right? All right, now the reason why we're taking this off and not just leaving it on there, because this thing's gonna get tore up or we're gonna put, when we're gonna be putting tile and sheetrock and all that stuff. So obviously we need to put this away, put some caps on there. You, we know that this is a thousand percent, we, this will go right on it because we got it secure and it's an exact position that we need it to. So let's just put some caps on it and we're done with this valve. All right, now these are just galvanized piping. This is half inch with a cap on, that way the water doesn't go anywhere. The reason why we put these caps on is because obviously we don't want to keep these open because we want to pressurize the rest of the house and it's going to show us that our solder joints are 100%. This is just going to cap our pipes off until we're done with the project when we're going to be putting in the final trim. And now we've got the water coming on. Up. Oh, I can hear the pipes getting pressurized. Make sure we wipe it down so we can see if there will be any kind of drops. Okay, perfect. And then what I also like to do is just to tap on the pipe, okay? The reason why we tap this thing, just to make sure our joints are 100%. We don't want them to be barely holding, okay? So, so if this did not make it leak, obviously lifetime of use, and all the other stuff will never make it leak because it will be unmovable. All right, and that's it guys. Nice and simple, as long as you got a plan of execution, all this stuff goes very easy. We're done with the valve, we're done with the curb, we got the drain in. Next step is the pan liner, then we got the sheetrock, then we're gonna be waterproofing everything and you know start mudding it, and then we're gonna have tile right after that. So I'm gonna take you on that journey, show you how the rest of this thing get, gets done. So we'll see you later.